Welcome to The Craft Cocktail. I'm Derek Schomer. This channel is all about learning how to best craft cocktails. For over a hundred years, cocktails have been the thing that brings people together, to share stories, to create stories, to create rumors, to create new history. So we're here to hopefully get you to create some new history. Today we're going to talk about the Boston Shaker. For some reason, this shaker is extremely intimidating to new people. So what we want to do is give you the shaking basics to how you could use this Boston shaker to make a good cocktail. What we'll do to practice is just use water and ice. That way if you do anything wrong, no big mess, it'll dry, and you don't waste precious alcohol. There are two different styles that you're going to see in the market from a Boston shaker perspective. There's the glass and tin and the tin and tin. This is a 28 to 30 ounce tin. This is almost a standard pint glass. It's standard by measure, but this is tempered. And what tempered does is it gives it a structural reinforcement so that when it shifts from cold to hot, it doesn't create as many micro fractures. It's gonna last longer, sustain longer, and has a less chance of breaking when you start beating it with your shaker tin. However, it does have a greater thermal mass. And what that means is when you're trying to chill down your cocktail, the cold is going to be absorbed into your glass first before it really gets through the whole cocktail. In a tin situation, the tin chills extremely quickly and it doesn't absorb as much of the chill from your cocktail, giving you a cocktail that's colder just a little bit faster. But on the upside of using the glasses, especially if you're doing this in front of a, a, an audience or a potential customer, is they could see it being built. So lastly, you have your julep strainer and a Hawthorne strainer or a strainer with springs. It's a fancy name to say this is what you're really going to use. This strainer is going to be able to catch some of the bits of uh, whatever it happens to be mint, cucumber, ice, all the other type of particles. So let's do this with the glass so you get to see the action happening. Pretend this is our cocktail. Pure vodka, I don't know. I usually add my ice to the shaker tin itself. Typically about three quarters up filled with ice is usually good. If your drink is really big, that might make it more challenging to shake. So you could kind of play with the ratios. Shake it a little bit longer if you need it to get chilled down. Also, use a spoon or tongs when you're playing with ice. Don't use your hands if you're serving for other people. If you're at home making yourself a drink before you watch Orange is the New Black, do whatever you want. Now what we're going to do is take this ice, pour it on top of this glass, and shake. Just a light hit. You don't have to get crazy. You don't have to hammer that sucker down. It's going to make it very hard to break the seal on this glass if you spent your time hammering it together. Plus, there's a higher potential you're going to break a glass, especially if it's not tempered or if it has little small micro fractures. You can tell it's already got a good seal to it. It will seal even better. Once the ice chills the air within that shaker, it's going to create a vacuum, making it very hard for it to come apart. Physics. Turn it around. Shake the glass towards you, tin towards your customer, your fan, or whoever else you're making a cocktail for, and then give it a good shake. I like to shake between 10 and 15 seconds, 20 seconds, especially if it has a lot of granulated sugar. Now, if you do have any type of potential leak, especially when working with egg whites, if you're gonna do a dry shake, uh, and we'll discuss that in another video, you want to make sure that when that, if it does break open, it coats you rather than anybody else. Since you're now first learning to use it, all you're going to do is coat yourself with water. Not a big deal. Now, once you've, you're finished, what I typically do is I find where the rock happens. It should have a slight lean to it. Look for the frost line. Right at that frost line, right where the seal begins, right where the seal begins, right here, you'll be able to give it a little firm tap and the glass comes off. If it doesn't come off the first time, give it a couple more taps. You don't have to get aggressive. If you didn't hammer the thing on to begin with, it's going to come off a lot easier. Take your strainer, put it on top, one finger on the strainer, two fingers around the tin, and you could pour your cocktail or water. You could buy a Boston shaker in a lot of different places. I suggest you go to my store, awesomedrinks.com, where you can get the tin on tin or tin on glass. And the glasses that we ship all are tempered, so it gives you the structural reinforcement you're gonna need. The other thing I highly recommend is you check out Liquid Intelligence. Dave Arnold has an entire chapter on how to use your bar equipment. He also has a nice layout of what you should have to start up with bar equipment. What are the essential pieces you need? And you could find that in a link below, along with the Joy of Mixology, which has another little chapter on how to shake how to, bar, how to serve guests the proper etiquette to utilizing your Boston Shaker. Those links are below, along with some links 
that you can use to pick up a Boston shaker to prepare yourself for the cocktails that we're going to be creating on the craft cocktail. Now go make yourself a drink.